Ich habe mich nicht mehr so gut gemacht, dass ich mich nicht mehr so gut gemacht habe. Das ist Lesson 6 of my Free Traditional Singing Workshop. Wir werden nicht mehr so gut haben, als ich dachte, für eine Talk about Section, aber wir werden das gleiche machen, wie wir immer tun. Und nehmen einen Song und break it down und dann am Ende haben wir noch Zeit für unsere Archive Section. So, der Song, den wir lernen in this very last lesson, is going to be another original song which I wrote and it's called The Keenan of Mary and it's a slow song. The Keenan of Mary for the death of sweet Jesus was much like the kingdom. I poured out great yalm of grief. I I strolled in the moonlight by the rocks and the mountains. I passed by the heather and the clear crystal fountain. Either My love, she was like the soul well we her so can take the day. And my heart it is rendered Either So like I said, this is a song that I wrote. I didn't come up with the tune myself. The tune is originally a Gaelic song called Melinan Braran, which I heard the Gaelic singer Eishvel Nikiaskil singing first. 
and I have the wee bit of paper that I originally wrote down on and it's just on the back of an envelope. Very cliche that it's on the back of an envelope but it's just written on the back of an envelope. Didn't really change much of the song at all by the looks of this. I left it after two verses and came back to it later because it's in a different pen and then left that and came back to that and wrote the very last one. I don't really know why I used the words that I did. Um, it's sometimes that just happens whenever you're writing songs or poems and things like that. I just started singing and s tried to see what fit to the rhythm of the song and that's what I came up with. So we're going to learn it and it's called Keenan of Mary. Right, so we're going to get stuck in with the first verse. So the Keenan of Mary for the death of sweet Jesus. The Keenan of Mary For the death of sweet Jesus Can you sing that with me? The Keenan of Mary for the death of sweet Jesus. So you can say Keening here instead of Keenan. Keenan is an old Irish practice of wailing, basically uh, a lament whenever somebody dies or something bad happens. You had professional keeners that came to funerals and things. Sometimes you had professional keeners and then sometimes you just had people who keened. And it's very indicative of Gaelic culture to have keeners or to have somebody keening. So the banshee can uh, keen or the banshee can wail. So we have the keening of Mary for the death of sweet Jesus. One more time. The keening of Mary for the death of sweet Jesus. And I'm leaving in those wee bits of ornamentation because I think we've got to a stage where we shouldn't really break it down as much as we did at the very beginning. And you should just try and sing it with what you have, with the ability that you have. We'll take that again from the top. The Keenan of Mary For the death of sweet Jesus and then the next part was much like the Keenan. Sing that with me. Was much like the Keenan. One more time. Was much like the Keenan. And then our very last part of that verse. That poor day to cry, and sing that with me. That poor day to cry, and one more time. That poor day to cry, if you're not familiar with that phrase Gragyal Mokrihu, it's quite a famous phrase to use, a popular phrase to use in Irish songs and Scottish Gaelic songs. You have the song Shan the Nungal, which is Ish Gragyal Mokrihu, here on the door, and the Lee Marley shot glass and I war. Oh, Grimu, I go nigo, no is go mal. Es moe me a heiki, a yan dongal. So that's very famous to use that. Es graig yal mo krihu. You are the bright um, love of my heart. Sort of like that. Graig yal, yal would be bright white. Uh, gra. It's like a Gaelic agra. Yeah, agra would be like your love. It's one of those terms of affection. Magra, Makri, Mawurning, which you'll hear later on. Mastor, Mastoring, like the song A Star A Star Agra. Or a Star A Star the Chukatu, Star A Star Agra, or a Chukatu no one do. These terms of affection are quite often used in lamentations and songs of praise. 
towards the person. You'll find it in early bardic poetry where people use terms of affection. Even from a male to a male perspective, there'll be those terms of affection. Very, very popular to say, Grag Yal And that's the way that I would pronounce it, Grag Yal as well. So it's very important that you get that, Grag Yal So we'll sing that all together for that verse. The king of Mary for the death of sweet Jesus was much like the king that poured out Greg Yalmokrihu. So we'll sing that all together one more time, just to make sure that you've got it. The kin of Mary for the death of sweet Jesus was much like the kin that poured out Craig Yalmokri. So we'll go on to the chorus. The chorus first is a Gaelic standard chorus with the Heidi Huos, a bit like the ones that we learnt for the Birds Keely. But this is slower, so it might be easier to achieve in certain aspects. <laughs> part is sing it with me and one more time this song I find is very smooth and bending like a river and um, it just eases from course to course very smoothly so you have the now you can sing that if you want but i feel like it loses a lot of it if you take out that bend and nature of it the smoothness of it is what makes the song and that's why whenever I put English lyrics to it, I wanted words that worked smoothly into one another. So whenever you sing it, although you can sing it a uh, very staccato way, I would prefer it if, because it's my lyrics, I would prefer it if you'd sang it in that very smooth, flowing way. So, we'll sing it all together for the chorus. <laughs> There's a wee gap in between that, like the verses. So the was much like the king. 
morning I pass by Heather We hear so I can't But there now by your graveside It's like that a slow circumflex so it's the rise pause and fall again so we'll start over with that chorus again so all together It sounds like Keenan. It sounds like a lamenting, crying for somebody, and that's what the song is. We'll take the first verse and sing through the chorus all together. So, one, two, three. The of Mary. For the death of sweet Jesus was much like the Canaan that poured out Gragion of We'll go on to the next verse, which is I strolled in the moonlight by the rocks and the mountains. I strolled in the moonlight by the rocks and the mountains. Sing that with me. I strolled in the moonlight by the rocks and the mountains. And one more time. I strolled in the moonlight by the rocks and the mountains. Then our next part. I passed by the heather and the clear crystal fountains. Sing it with me. I passed by the heather and the clear crystal fountains. One more time. I pass by the heather and the clear crystal fountains. So sing it all together with me. One, two, three. I strolled in the moonlight. By the rocks and the mountains, I pass by the heather and the clear crystal fountains. One more time. I strolled in the moonlight by the rocks and the mountains. I passed by the heather 
And the clear crystal fountains. So then we'll add on our course to that. One, two, three. Either you Either Either morning So we'll sing the first verse, the chorus, the second verse and the chorus and then we'll just plunge right into all of the song together without any stops and I want you to read the lyrics along with it. Just throw you in at the deep end and do the ornamentation but fit with the flow of the song. Do your own ornamentation as well and fit with the flow of the song. This song, for me anyway, whenever I'm singing it, takes a lot out of me and it feels like somebody's pulling at something inside you to get out and that's what that flowing comes from you're going with it and you're going back and forward and you're flowing with it and somebody's pulling at you and that's what a lament is somebody's pulling at you but you can't get at it you can't get at them and that's what this song should feel like as you're singing it that's what i feel whenever i'm singing it and that's why it takes so much out of me whenever i sing it so we'll start from the top <laughs> For the death of sweet Jesus was much like the king that poured out Gregian I strolled in the moonlight by the rocks and the mountains. I passed by the heather and the clear crystal fountain. Either what we've got. I'm going to advise you that you take a wee break at the minute. I'm going to take a quick break, a couple of minutes, um, just because this song is very, whew, a lot of energy. So I'd advise you to do the same and come back at it with fresh feeling and fresh lungs and then we'll go through it from the top down to the bottom. You can pause it here and then we'll go straight on to the next part. Right, welcome back. Hopefully you're feeling a bit refreshed that you can take this at a better angle. Maybe you're thinking, I don't know what you're talking about. I would say that if you've never experienced sweating after a song, you haven't put enough into it. Whenever I competed in the Ulster Fla, I sang Stately Woods of True and I was shaken by the end of it. I put everything into it 
and there sometimes that happens and sometimes it doesn't but whenever you get that feeling of oh you're not just singing a song you're working at it you're laboring at it you're feeling every note every word every syllable and it runs through your veins like blood and it's very very personal and very very intimate and very i don't really know what else to say about it it's just whenever you sing right whenever you sing from your soul you're very inside it's very special and nobody can really take that away from you the first singing session i went to i got that feeling and people said to me after i told them it was my first singing session they said you're hooked on it now and it honestly is a drug not that you want that feeling again but it's very spiritual for want of a better word it's, there's magic in words and that's why hundreds of years ago people say that there were power in words there was magic in words that if you said particular words in the right order that they could have a certain effect in old bardic poetry if people composed a satire against a chieftain the chieftain was not only hurt emotionally by the bad things that were said about him but it was said that the blemish on his character would appear on him physically in some way and that words said in a malicious way have an effect on the inside as well as the outside so that's a very old idea that words have this power to connect and change the way that your surroundings feel and change the way that you feel and change the way that other people feel whenever they hear them so traditional singing it's extremely powerful and extremely precious it's not like modern singing it's just something something that can't be described the first instrument that man had before any other instrument was made any carved flute out of deer bone and any owl style kithara harp lyre before any of that was made there was the human voice and so you have traditional songs and it's that powerfulness of connection that can happen with no music in the background the power that one person has to connect to another or the power that one person has to connect to themselves so completely it's very very important it's interesting that i've said that probably in the last lesson but that's probably the best lesson i could teach you the importance of feeling the importance of emotion in a song there's a review, review that said that i sang from that deep place within and that's what you have to do you shouldn't be conscious of what you're doing you should just be breathing with it and feeling it and doing it and i would encourage people who sing with instruments who are very good singers with instruments to set down the instrument every now and again and just sit in a room by yourself you don't have to be with anybody just sit in a room and sing a song and feel the words and feel the rhythm and feel the thread of it run through your body because that's what it is it feels like a thread running through your body and it's coming out of your mouth and this thread is weaving a magical picture around you and that's why a lot of singers will have their eyes closed for me in my experience i close my eyes because i can see the words i can see everything that's happening within those words i see a scene every time it's like reading a book and seeing the pictures in your mind you're singing the words and seeing the pictures in your mind and whenever you open your eyes it's like disconnecting from that world yeah it's a very precious um thing to have so that's what i think anyway uh we'll sing the entire song through now and then we'll go on to our archive section and then that will be you for the very last lesson from the top all the way to the bottom get your lyrics out the kingdom of mary for the death of sweet jesus was much like in the kingdom that poured out great young oak either you or 
This is my archive section and the very last archive section so we've got some really big doozies for you and we'll just we'll just crack on. The first thing that I have is this book that I got whenever I was I was quite young whenever I got it actually. Um it is William Morris's a uh, Guinevere Jason etc. Uh William Morris was a pre Raphaelite artist. He's known for his textiles but he also wrote Poetry, that's him there, and it's an absolutely fantastic book. It's got the more famous works that are The Defence of Guinevere and also The Life and Death of Jason, which is the story of Jason and the Golden Fleece. And The Defence of Guinevere is about Guinevere from the King Arthur traditional stories. And this is very important to me because I used a poem in this as the basis for one of the first songs that I wrote the chapel on Lioness and it's 
All day long and every day from Christmas Eve to Whit Sunday within that chapel aisle I lay and no man came near. Naked to the waist was I and deep within my breast did lie though no man any blood could spy the truncheon of a spear. No meat did ever pass my lips those days alas the sunlight slips from off the gilded park loose dips and night comes on apace. My arms lay back behind my head over my raised up knees was spread a samite cloth of white and red a rose lay on my face. Many a time I tried to shout, but as in dream of battle rout, my frozen speech would not well out, I could not even weep. With inward sigh I see the sun fade off the pillars one by one, my heart faints when the day is done, because I cannot sleep. I used that whenever I was a teenager to write one of my first songs. It's absolutely amazing. It's got so much in it. If you can get a collection like this book I would really recommend getting it. It's absolutely fantastic some of the stuff in here especially the defence of Guinevere and the life and death of Jason which has some really great lines in it. But in the midst there was a grassy space raised somewhat over all the flowery place on marble terraced walls wrought like a dream and round about it ran a clear blue stream bridge door with marble steps and midmost there grew a green tree whose smooth grey boughs did bear such fruit as never man elsewhere had seen for twixt the sunlight and the shadow green shone out fair apples of red gleaming gold moreover round the tree in many a fold lay coiled a dragon glittering little less than that which his eternal watchfulness was set to guard nor yet was he alone for from the daisy grass about him shone gold raiment wrapping round two damsels fair and one upon the steps combed out her hair, and with shut eyes sung low as in a dream, and one stood naked in the cold blue stream, while on the bank her golden raiment lay, but on that noontide of the quivering day she only hearing the seafarer shout her lovely golden head had turned about, and seen their white sail flapping o'er the wall, and as she turned had let her tresses fall, which the thin water rippling round her knee bore outward from her toward the restless sea. It's amazing. Some people thought he was a bit full on, and that is very full on, but I think that's just because he feels it more than some people would. It is a bit like the quote that I said from J.R. Tolkien, where his friend told him not to overdo it. He sometimes goes very heavy on the language, but it's great. I think it's fantastic, and I loved it as a teenager and I still love it now. It's a great book. So next we have a very nice wee book. I got it from a shop in Belfast, I think an Oxfam shop, a second hand bookshop in Belfast. And it is Popular British Ballads, an anthology by Everyman's Library, published by Everyman's Library, I should say. A book of popular British ballads selected and arranged with an introduction by R. Brimley Johnson. Everyman's Library, number 572. So you should still be able to get a copy of that. And it's got Little Musgrave and Lady Barnard, which was sung by Christy Moore, M Little Musgrave. We have the Twa Sisters, very famous Scottish song. We have Fair Margaret and Sweet William, which I've sang through in full, or a variation of it. We have Young Waters, which is a great English folk song. We've got Clerk Saunders as well, which has changed very little. Bonnie James Campbell, Robin Hood songs in full. Fair Annie. It's just great. Absolutely fantastic. And I find stuff in it all the time. For, so for a tiny book, it's got so much in it, I would definitely recommend having a look at it. I have a play with it sometimes, as I do with other books, and try and have a wee gander to see what I can do with stuff in it. But it's great. The next thing I have is, as per usual, another vinyl record. And it is Martin Carthy. And this is probably the first vinyl I think I got. Um, I wanted to get a vinyl record player and this was the very first one I got. got some fantastic stuff on it, so High Germany, the trees, they do grow high. And it's got Sove on it, which is the first version of the song Willie Taylor that I heard. So you have Sove, which is Sove, Sove, all on the day she dressed herself in man's array. We sold and pestle all by her side to meet her true love, to meet her true love we did ride. Then you have Willie Taylor. Willie Taylor and his youthful lover, full of mirth and loyalty, 
They were going to the church to be married, he was breast and sent to see. She dressed herself up like a sailor, on her breast she wore a star. Her lovely long and slender fingers gave them all just a smear of tar. Diddly idle dum, diddly idle dum. It's great. Rhea McConley sings a fantastic version of that song. But Sauvé is great as well. And Martin Carthy's got some great guitar playing on it, if you like a bit of guitar playing. If you also like guitar playing, you can check out Jack Warnock, he's great, and plays on my album, uh, and Chanach Du. You also have E Mariner's All, Queen of Hearts, Bloomfield, Bring Hill, Mind Disaster, Scarborough Fair, which is great, my mother loves that song, Lovely Joan, The Barley and the Rye, The Wind That Shakes the Barley, The Two Magicians, The Handsome Cabin Boy, and A Begging I Will Go. So yeah, it's a really great vinyl, uh, really great record, great songs on it, Martin Carthy's fantastic. Um, as are the Watersons, they have a fantastic album which I love and it is packed with stuff. They're English singers and Martin Carthy sings with them and they have some amazing stuff on it. Hallam Toe, Dido Bendigo, there was Dido Bendigo, gentry was there. It's a song about a fox hunt, that's great, but like the way Craig and White Hair, it's about hunting as well which is a local song to me. Next I have, um, I don't know what to do first, I have a wee group of Scots Gaelic things and then I have a massive Laura a Scalaga, a book in Irish. I'll leave the big Irish book to last because that's probably one of the really important things so I'll start with this um, uh, Gaelic Nahalipa, this which is the Avoiding and Other Poems by Yomish McNichol. It has the poetry in Gaelic on one side and the English translation on the other and I bought it and I was reading away at it and then I flipped to the front one day and I realised that it was signed by him and I thought that's absolutely amazing. It's got Brieslach uh, which um, is translated as Delirium. It's a poem which Capra Cayley has turned into a song so we have Brieslach I went to the hazelwood yesterday, seeking hazelnuts for food, but on every branch and twig was your pursuing face. I went to the fertile shore yesterday, to gather cockles for a meal. Every single shell was filled with your beauty, my love. Hymen J yam chula halt in gira na han er sin bia, ach sever a chula de igach de an sad mrio. It's great. There's the poem Bratach in it. Uh, Bratach means banner. There's a song which is considered a church song, I believe, and it's Vikyar la nambratik pana. Vikyar la nambratik pana, vikyar la nambratik pana, vikyar la nambratik pana, khunam idol langar salya. Iyallam bikko ilyohoro, iyallam bikko ilyohoro, iyallam bikko ilyohoro, huyo rainyo huyo wena. If you're looking for something askalak nahalipa, I would go for the avoiding and other poems by Yonish McNichol. Next, I have two things, two copies of the same book, and it's very, very important. It's got the same name as me. It's called Salam Gavi or Salam Gavi. In Scotland, they'd say Davy Stuart, whereas here we'd say Davy Stuart. Anyway, it's the Sam book, and it is in metrical verse, so you can sing it. And I used to go to St Anne's Cathedral in the morning time, before university, and go to morning prayers, because I was there very early. And I used to go to morning prayers in St Anne's Cathedral and I would bring my Gaelic sandbook and after the morning service was done I would stand in the empty cathedral at about 9 o'clock I would stand in the empty cathedral after the service was done and I would sing psalms in Gaelic just for myself, just for a bit of a connection and the minister who used to take service would sit he said to me one day I'm supposed to be clearing up but I like just sitting and listening to psalms so this is it, this is the new, uh, my new copy of it, but this wasn't the first copy that I have of it. The first copy that I got of this book, I actually got this book so that I wasn't handling the other copy so much because I was afraid of it falling apart, but this is the newer copy that I use. But the first copy that I got was actually this, and I put this wee cover on it just to protect it a bit, and this is it. It's a wee bit worse for wear, coming apart at the spine a wee bit. And that's why I keep this wee paper cover on it. I took this with me to my university graduation 
as a bit of a something nice to have in my pocket and I put a couple of photographs of my grandparents in it. It's from the 1800s I believe and it's amazing and it was an absolute bargain as well. And I got this because I started listening to Gaelic psalm singing and I wanted to be able to follow along with what was happening. And I couldn't find a new edition at the time and I'm glad that I couldn't because I found this before I found anything else. Yeah. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. I love it. If you haven't listened to Gaelic psalm singing, it's a whole other level and I would very much encourage you to look it up. Just type in Gaelic psalm singing. Type in psalm singing on the Isle of Lewis. You can get albums which I've bought and they are amazing. I used to listen to them in the car and it was very relaxing going back and forth. And I would use this sometimes to sing along with them. And it just works. You just find yourself singing along and you know what, where to go and you just do it. This is one of my, definitely one of my most prized possessions, this psalm book in Scots Gaelic. This is one of the things that helped me come home to Gaelic culture. So the penultimate thing that I have here today is massive. A massive Laur a Gaelic definitely is a big book. It is A Hidden Ulster by Padre Keen Hulan and People Songs and Traditions of Oriel. And Oriel was an oil region of uh, Ulster which slowly faded and became known by various county names and it in around South East Ulster counts as parts of Monaghan and I think really old Oriel um, consisted of parts of Tyrone as well, very South Tyrone, east, South East Tyrone where I'm from. But these are songs collected from the inhabitants of that area. Padreen has put it all together into this absolutely exceptional book with discourses in it and translations of the songs and then at the back as well are tunes. Like where else are you going to get that? It's like going to an, an archive. This is an archive in itself and very very well done. Absolutely fantastic and I find something new in it all the time. Whenever I went over Scotland to do Celtic Connections I brought it with me in my bag because I thought I'm just going to start reading this. I'm still reading it but I'm loving it. That really is absolutely fantastic. And it's got photographs of the people as well. It really is an all-in-one archive of a book. I sing the song Urkel and Cregan, which features in this. One of my favourite songs, Imagine Noor, comes from this collection. One of my favourite singers, Askelga Blahing Vikana, sings Imagine Noor and it's amazing. They have a website, Oriel Arts. If you type in Oriel Arts, you will find it and there are recordings of people singing some of the songs as well. And some uh, instrumentalists are playing the tunes as well, which are in the book. You can find Padraigin online singing songs from the collection, which are great recordings as well. Such a tre treasure to have. I recently did the Garland song, or Irene, out on the Kriwa, which I got from this book, which is here. Um, I did a recording of that and put it up, and it was shared around. And it's she mokrius the Kriwa na manu so laido ri wada saidi. It's Kriwa na kali na Kriwa na moh laido ri wada saidi. I got all that from this. I got so much from this book. I believe that you can still see, I think, on TG Kehar, their player online, as a recording of Padraigin, and she talks about this book in their Shea Malaych series, and it's really great. I'd very much encourage you to have a look at it. I'd very much encourage you to get this book, because it is a fantastic resource for anyone wishing to branch out into singing as Gaelic. And I knew that I was going to be talking about Gaelic and Gaelic, and that's why I wore my specially made Fáinne Gearg, my Réad Fáinne for Cearta Dina Cearta Gianga, People Rights, Language Rights, which is part of the Act Anish movement, which I also wrote a song for. But I knew I was going to be talking about this, so I had to wear this as well. Padraigin is just an absolute stalwart of the language and the uh, tradition. I'm always amazed whenever I flip through it and find something new. I've got pages folded down, I've got pages marked. I'm just looking through everything, always. It's an absolutely fantastic resource to have, and I'm very thankful to have it. 
and you would be too if you're looking to branch out into singing a skilga or even just research songs of skilga. The very last thing that I have, uh, I've showed it before, but it's just to talk about what I'm doing now, quickly, end off, and it is Homer's Iliad, the Loeb Classical Library, books 1 to 12, and then I have volume 1, I've got volume 2 as well. And what I'm doing at the minute is, as you can see, I'm looking through lots of parts. I've got a Instagram page called Phoebus Apollo Society, which I talk about my interest in classical culture, and talk about different things that I know, because I didn't want to put that on my main page, because people get head fried with everything that I was putting on it, so I made it a separate one. And out of that stemmed the idea that using this for help and other Iliads that I have, I am making a verse translation of the Iliad that can be sang, because nobody sings the Iliad anymore, not to my knowledge anyway. So instead of just using it for references, which I do all the time in different songs, what I'm working on at the minute is a verse sung translation of the Iliad. That's where this wee boy comes in and is helping me out on other various things. I've only recently started it and it's going smoothly enough at the minute, but I'm using what I've talked about in this, where I'm using old formulas or rather formulaic writing. I want to be able to have it as a standalone thing that somebody can read, but as a standalone thing that it's supposed to be sung as well. So yeah, that's what I'm working on at the minute, as well as a couple of hundred other things, work, working on my original song archive, gathering all the bits and pieces together so that I have that. Lots of other things really, just to keep me busy. And this is one of them that has now come to an end. So I thank you very much for joining me and supporting me and I hope that you've got something out of it. I think I've learnt a lot by doing it. I've learnt what I can do and what I can't do. I've learnt how frustrating it is with technology, uh, trying to get things like that to work. I've learnt quite a lot from doing this and I'm very thankful that I've done it and very thankful of the support that I've got and very honoured that people are using this to make their own courses as well. And I just wanted to make something that was available to everybody really, that people didn't have to buy at a time that was very stressful enough without having to buy something else. So it's nice to get a wee free thing now and again. But yeah, I want to thank you very much for joining me on this uh, interesting journey and thank Gasyard Fela as well for their reaching out to me at the very, very beginning whenever they didn't have to do it and I wasn't expecting it. And yeah, thank you very much for joining me. And if you liked it, please like the course page, please like the, the videos, comment underneath, share it. If you want a copy of any of the lyrics, I've got them all saved as PDFs. Send me a private message with your email address and I'll get one sent across to you. And all the references are in the PDFs as well. Have fun with those references, use them as jumping off points, because that's what I do whenever I find things. One thing becomes a jumping off point to another thing. And just enjoy singing traditional songs, singing your own accent, feel the song, as you sing it, just feel the connection, because that's what traditional singing is all about, feeling the connection, singing from your soul and your heart and being true to the song and true to yourself. Start writing traditional songs if you have that capability, just try it out. It can be a bit awkward at times writing traditional songs, but it's very rewarding. Yeah, that's it. Thank you very much. Good morning, Agus Stay healthy and happy and all the rest of it. Thank you very much for joining me.